Hello everyone, welcome once again to Phone Pro, the phonetic program that I am implementing um, on the internet uh, to help language learners improve their pronunciation, their grammar, and their overall uh, English language skills. Today I'm going to be talking about phonetic transcription, and although the term sounds a little bit technical, it is extremely important if you really want to speak English well. Okay. Let's go to a, I'm going to go through a series of slides and I will explain, um, you know, phonetic symbols in detail. I will give you, uh, examples of words, um, that carry, you know, specific phonetic symbols. And I would say that the most important aspect of my presentation today is that I would like you to make a very a strong connection between what you read, the, the phonetic symbol that you read in a phonetic transcription, and the production, okay, of that symbol in pronunciation. Okay, so let's get started. I am going to go to the following slide. Okay, slide number two. What is phonetic transcription? I will read the concept, and as I read, if um, I find uh, something important that I'd like to tell you or that you should know about, I will mention it. Phonetic transcription is a conventional uh, system of written words. These, I'm sorry, of written symbols. These symbols are called phonetic symbols. Each phonetic symbol is nothing more than a graphic representation of the sound it represents. Phonetic symbols when learned correctly, are the perfect solution to your pronunciation challenges. Okay, I want you to pay attention to this. When learned correctly, if you really want to speak English well, you need to know phonetic transcription. And if you want to know phonetic transcription well, you have to dedicate ample time to learning each symbol correctly. Okay, let us go to the following slide. Okay, why is phonetic transcription so important if you are studying English? Well, there are several reasons. Number one, English pronunciation and, of course, listening comprehension of other people's pronunciation in English can be uh, A, difficult, B, confusing, C, sometimes embarrassing and even dangerous. For example, the word focus is a very challenging word. Many students, many English language learners always mispronounce this word and then they can sometimes unintentionally create bad words. Uh, B, mercenary. If, uh, if you make a pronunciation mistake with the word mercenary or missionary, your, your, you know, the message that you're trying to convey may be unclear, confusing, and to some other listeners, it may sound um, dangerous. Um, a mercenary is someone who goes to war for money. A missionary is someone decent and religious who has a mission, uh, usually a, a religious mission. Um, so. Reason number two why phonetic transcription is important, why I ha it makes me, you know, um, encourage all my students to learn how to read phonetic transcription accurately. Well, um, phonetic transcription is extremely important because your professor uh, cannot teach you the pronunciation of all the words in the English uh, language. It would take decades. Uh, there are thousands of words in English. If you know how to read the phonetic symbols that represent each word's pronunciation, you will never need a professor to teach you pronunciation. That is uh, the second reason why phonetic transcription is so uh, crucial. Let us go to the next slide. Okay. Uh, phonetic transcription is also important because every English language student should have a correct, comprehensible pronunciation in English. And number four, this means that if a word in English is new to you, you should try to pronounce it only 
after reading its phonetic transcription. That is, the graphic representation of a word's pronunciation before you attempt to say the word. Um, I've been I've been studying English for 30 years, over 30 years. Um, I began when I was very young. And this is my best piece of advice to anyone who wants to learn correct pronunciation. Do not try to guess the pronunciation of a word in English. Always read its phonetic transcription first and then try pronouncing the word. Now, um, with that said, I would like to encourage you, uh, motivate you to learn the phonetic symbols of the English language so that you can pronounce all your English words correctly. Are you ready? Okay. If you are ready, let's move on to the next slide. Where, first of all, let's ask ourselves this question. Where do we find the phonetic transcription of all the words in English? Very simple. In all good dictionaries, whether in book format or uh, online. Uh, but you have to be careful. Why? Because, see how I have these three names in here. I have the um, Webster's Dictionary. I have the free online uh, dictionaries. And I also mentioned the International Phonetic Alphabet. All these can give you phonetic uh, transcription systems. The problem is that they are not standard. For example, um, in this case, um, Webster's um, uses its own phonetic transcription system, which is not always the same as a free online dictionaries or the International Phonetic Alphabet. If you are not going to be a linguist, if you don't want to be a, a, a language super expert, you only need to know one. Now, if you learn one, you should always adhere to the one you learn for the rest of your life, okay? Because the problem is that symbols um, may vary across different uh, systems, and then it can be confusing for you. If you learn only one, confusion will be reduced to a minimum. Now, my favorite for students is the Webster's Dictionary. Uh, I don't mean that other dictionaries are not good. They're all amazing. But again, you have to choose one. And if I have to choose one for English language learners like you, I would say Merriam-Webster. So where do you find Merriam-Webster's? Very easily, you go to merriam-webster's.com or um, just type when you are uh, entering the um, internet, adder internet address, type M hyphen w.com and you will go straight to the um, Miriam Webster's website okay let's go to the next slide okay let's begin with important factors that you need to consider study and know very well um, before you're able to actually read the phonetic symbols the first one is primary stress and this is not rocket science this is very easy to learn and remember. Um, it is important to learn primary stress because the location of stressed syllables in every word in English is variable. Sometimes it's the first syllable, sometimes the second syllable, sometimes the third syllable, and if you don't know the word, then you don't know where it should be pronounced. Again, do not take risks. Read the phonetic transcription first and then uh, try pronouncing the word in question. Now. Uh, primary stress um, is also important because all words in the English language have some sort of stress on at least one of the syllables. Number three, the heaviest stress on a syllable in any word is called this primary, primary stress. Let us go to the following uh, slide. All right. Let's see a couple of examples of how uh, primary stress is pronounced and most importantly, how primary stress is represented in phonetic transcription in dictionaries. Yes, even the stress is represented in phonetic transcription. So if you read 
the phonetic transcription of a word, you are going to see where the stress is, and then you can pronounce it. I'll give you the examples right now. Example number one, table. This is an easy word, and I'm giving you this word because I want you to realize, I want you to be able to see the contrast between an easy word and a difficult word. For example, table. Well, we all know that it's on the first uh, syllable, t, and this here, allow me, Okay, right there, this little single quote, okay, is the representation, the graphical representation of phonetic symbol. Now, if you take a look, the symbol is here, and then the, 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 to the right, there is a syllable. The primary stress, as represented by Merriam Webster's, okay, indicates, the primary stress symbol indicates that um, the syllable to the right, to the right of um, the primary stress symbol is pronounced. For example, here we have the symbol here. So you go to the right, and this syllable is stressed. So you would not, you wouldn't say table. Here it's table. Once again, this is an easy word, and everyone, almost everybody knows how to pronounce it. But the principle is that where you see the primary stress symbol. You need to, um, you know, stress the following the following syllable moving to the right as you read. Now this is easy here because there is no syllable uh, to the left of the um, primary stress symbol. However, in example number two, we have this word that is a longer word, and then you have k, and then men. So here you can see that. Don't be confused. Just know that the uh, the uh, syllable to the right, to the right of the primary stress symbol is the one that's stressed. So you would say commensurate, 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 commensurate. Okay. Let us move on to the following slide. All right. This is going to be very interesting. Because here we are going to talk about secondary stress. Yes, there is secondary stress. In other languages, you know, secondary stress does not exist. But in English, we have it and you have to pronounce it. Now, first of all, how do we represent secondary stress? Well, if you take a look here, example number three, this word is a very long word. And uh, right here, you have the phonetic transcription. By the way, you know that a word is transcribed phonetically when you see these slashes, okay? The slashes in some phonetic transcription systems are backwards, in some other phonetic transcription systems are forward. So this is one of the differences uh, across different phonetic transcription systems. So in this case, Merriam-Webster's, uh, I believe, represents it uh, with backwards, um, sl backward slashes. So you have this. Now take a look at the primary stress symbol is this one here, and that is above the word. See? So Based on the previous slide, we have to stress the syllable to the right of the phonetic, I'm sorry, of the primary stress. So this syllable is the um, heaviest stress in the word. However, if we take a look at this syllable here, dis, we see that there is a symbol here. This is the symbol of the secondary stress. Simple. The primary stress goes above the word, the secondary stress goes under the word. Of course, um, just like here, the syllable that is stressed goes on the right of the primary stress. Here, you stress the syllable that is to the right of the um, prim secondary stress symbol. Now, this word is very interesting because it has one primary one primary stress and one two secondary stresses two secondary stresses and how do you read this well 
Very simple. You stress this one more heavily, and then you stress uh, this one and this syllable, okay? More heavily than this one and then this one. It's very simple. So what you say is like, if you play with your, if you clap with your hands, you would go, this is secondary stress, and this is primary stress. You would say, discombobulate, 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 okay? Now, this is a very long word, not a very common one. I'm sure that if you ask your friend the meaning of discombobulate, they will have to go to a dictionary. Um, but it's a very good word to know if you want to impress uh, your listeners. Now, um, how do you read it? Well, take a look at number one, the slashes, to make sure that this is the phonetic transcription. And number two, take a look at the um, stress symbols. Number three, see where the primary uh, stress symbol is located and the syllable to its right will be very heavily pronounced. You don't have to scream. You don't have to say, bah. No, 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 no. It's just a syllable that will be heavier than the rest of the syllables. Now, take a look at um, a secondary stress symbol here and here. Now, you're ready to pronounce a word uh, considering the uh, stress symbols discombobulate okay now let us move on to the following slide all right this is another important symbol that you need to consider and this is the syllable division symbol right here not the uh, quotation marks just this and examples are shown right here discombobulate okay take a look at this hyphen this hyphen this I'm sorry about my point in my mouth it's a little bit shaky um, this hyphen and this hyphen that means that the word can be correctly divided there this nowadays with the um, advent of computers is to a certain extent um, uh, not so relevant because computers will do the work for us but when there were no computers and you were writing on, on your notebook and you came to the end of the sheet, like the end of the page, and you, you had no more space, you had to go down to the next line, this syllable division was extremely important. But, you know, uh, for our pronunciation purposes, this is not so relevant because um, we want to focus on very good speaking. Uh, I just want you to know what that stands for so that you are fully informed. Now, the word disassemble has the same syllable division, and here we have a, a disassemble. If you take a look, you have a secondary stress here, so meaning the syllable dis will be um, secondarily stressed, and then the syllable sem will be primarily stressed. So the pronunciation is disassemble, disassemble, okay? Let's move on to the following slide. Okay, let's take a look at these parentheses, okay? What happens to any sound in parentheses? Very simple. Any sound that is in parentheses is um, optional, meaning you can pronounce it or you can decide not to pronounce it because in real life, in the English language, when American English speakers use the word, you can hear or not hear the sound that is produced or that is located within the parentheses. Example, let's come back to our um, word, discombobulate. Okay, you can say b or b, discombobulate, discombobulate or discombobulate. Since this E sound, this is not Y, this is not a letter, this is a sound. Since this sound, since this sound here is within parentheses, that means that you can say it or you can decide. If you decide, if so decide, you don't have to say it. So whenever you see a phonetic symbol in parentheses, it's your choice, okay? Now, basically, just listen to how everyone in your area says it. If they 
pronounce the sound, you know, go ahead and sound, you know, pronounce the, pronounce the sound. If they don't, well, uh, learn from them and then uh, don't pronounce it, but you, you know, you know what is happening if you see the phonetic transcription in the dictionary. Okay, next slide. Okay, okay, here we go. This that looks like a mathematical division um, symbol, this means that um, the word in which this symbol is used is according to many speakers mispronounced by some other speakers the best example i can think about is this one nuclear um even even presidents uh, for example i remember one time i heard uh former president w uh, george w bush say this word and he said it incorrectly he said new kill new killer new killer okay the correct pronunciation is nuclear i believe and um if you uh try to find this word in Miriam Webster's it should show you this symbol and that indicates that um some speakers according to listeners do not pronounce this word correctly by the way this uh is important to know but you will not see you will not see this symbol very often next slide Okay, finally, we are coming to, um, you know, the substance of our uh, presentation, the sounds. Uh, for the purpose of um, this presentation, I have decided to number the sounds so that I can divide each sound in shorter segments. If you want to see the entire presentation um, and, you know, uh, in only one video, I have an excellent three-part video, um, and all you have to do is go to my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the channel because if you subscribe to the channel, you are going to have free access to every video that um, I produce in a very organized way. If you try to find the videos um, on the internet, it's more disorganized. So become a, a subscriber, subscribe. Well, um, sorry about that digression. Let's come to the first sound. Let me explain. Remember, any, th any letter that is outside uh, slashes is just a letter. However, when you see something in slashes, in this case, forward slash, um that is never a letter for example this is not letter r okay this is a sound and the sound is her now how do we pronounce this combination we pronounce this combination like this er and i will get closer to the camera so that you can see the the position of my mouth organs okay this is the secret uh to beautiful pronunciation in english imitation of the position of the mouth organs that's all if you see my mouth organs and you exactly reproduce you know my the position that i will show you you should have no problem if you don't do it well it is your responsibility you have to learn that if you want to speak english you have to accommodate your mouth organs in a manner that uh, most English speaking uh, people uh, position their mouth organs. And here we go with the first one. Sound number one. Here we go. Err. Err. Okay. Position of uh, the lips. Uh, the position of the lips is rounded, but not flat. Not like this, but protruded like this. Okay. And then the tongue goes to the back of the throat, so like this. Er, er. Examples. You can repeat after me if if you want. Please remember, you need to imitate. Okay, you need to photocopy. Okay, the position of my mouth organs. Here we go. Further, merger, 
bird, bird, spur, turf, turf, surf, surface, surface, murky, blur, blurred, hurry. Okay, let us go to the following slide. Okay, this is sound number two. Sound number two is what we call the happy vowel. As you can see, this is the phonetic symbol. Remember, this is never letter A because once you have the slashes, everything in slashes is just phonetic transcription. It's just sound. Okay, this sound is pronounced ah. Again, ah. Again, ah. So, smile. Don't open your mouth too much. Don't say, ah. No, that's a, that's a Spanish, Italian, French, ah. No. This is, ah. Ah. And I will read uh, these words, okay, that uh, include this uh, sound here. Where you see the highlight, that's where the sound is produced, and this is where, when you use the, the dictionary to find the phonetic transcription, in this case, in these examples, uh, this is where you're going to have the phonetic symbol that you see right here. Now, here we go. Number one, mat, map, mad. Gag, snap, patch, rag, wrap, patsy, slam, rat, dance, class, lad. Bag, back, cat, tap. Okay, I want to mention that this is a slow process. Okay, if you want to learn correctly, you cannot say, I want to learn this fast and I'm going to study fast and I will learn. It will not happen like that. This is a different language, this is a slow process. It will not take very long, but only if you study, you know, slowly. I know it sounds contradictory, but if you want to learn fast, you have to study slowly. Okay? Now, let us go to the next sound. Okay. This is sound number three, and this is how you graphically represent sound number three. Okay, remember this is not a letter. This is the phonetic symbol because you can see here and here the, the um, slashes, okay? The slashes can be forward or backwards like in this case. They are just there to represent that anything within the slashes, okay? Anything there is considered a sound, never a letter. How do we pronounce sound number three? A, A. Now listen very carefully. If you say A, that's incorrect. Okay. In the sound A, we have two sounds. A, A, I'm sorry, A. Since we have two sounds, I will tell you a little secret. Okay. When you have two sounds, two vowel sounds, you can have consonant sounds or you can have vowel sounds. When you have two vowel sounds, the second sound, the second sound is always short, not intense. It is never 
long and by long i don't mean a i don't mean long in in you know length of time no 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 but i'm sorry by long i mean intense like ye i'll give you this example which i use in many of my classes this is i'm going to make a very intense sound in this case e is like e something like that is extremely intense okay no you need to have not intense short sounds every time you have two vowel sounds together the second one is short a i am going to say it incorrectly okay i'm sorry incorrectly and i will say it correctly this means incorrectly and then this means correctly we go a a a a a okay so this sound here uh, i'm sorry this phonetic symbol oh i'm sorry about my pointer okay here we go this phonetic symbol is pronounced a a a okay examples day aorta grape hay shame pay mate fade drape bait babe stay ray tame date cape raid laid obey clay nate now in this uh, slide for cell number three, I want you to pay attention to something extremely important. If you take a look, um, A, the sound A is uh, produced by different uh, combinations of letters. For example, A can be produced by the combination of A, Y, or by a by itself or by a plus a consonant plus a vowel or by e plus y hey or by a plus a consonant plus a vowel oh wait wait there is a pattern here if you take a look if we take a look we have a consonant vowel and here we have a consonant vowel and it's pronounced a if you know now that um a plus consonant plus a vowel can be pronounced a you are starting to develop an understanding of which combinations of letters can produce the sound a now this is not a 100 percent um certain rules so you need to use some caution before you say all the words that end in a plus um uh, consonant plus vowel will produce you know the the um, letter a will be will be pronounced a no but it gives you a very good idea that in many cases you can pronounce it um you can pronounce letter letter a in 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 that manner a now here we have a y okay like here a y so hey now here we have once again a consonant plus vowel well mate a consonant plus i'm sorry about my pointer okay here we go a consonant plus vowel vowel so a fade and the symbol that we use to represent the a sound is this one okay so when you don't know a word and you go to a you know miriamwebsters.com or m-w.com and you see this symbol please pronounce it a well let us continue let's uh, go to the following slide the following sound okay this is sound number four sound number four is produced in the following manner oh oh 
Okay, remember, this is not letter A. This is a phonetic uh, symbol because it's in slashes, okay? So, for this sound, just open your mouth a little bit, rounded lips, and say, open your throat like this. Hopefully, you're able to see it. And say, ah. Oh. Examples. Please repeat after me if if you desire to do so. Bother. Caught. Block. Rock. Stock. Pop. Mop. Top. Pop. Croc, crocodile, popsicle, possible, impossible, impossibility, block. Okay, once again, this is ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay, this sound is ah. Uh. Let us go to the following slide. All right, this is a combination of a plus er. So the pronunciation of this phonetic symbol is or, or. Okay, words that include this sound are here. Examples, car, star, bar, Bark, heart. Let me try to get a little bit closer here. Okay. Uh, mar, um, car, arm, bazaar, scar, spark, and bark. Bizarre. Please pay attention. It's, it's not bizarre. It's b bizarre. Bizarre. Part. Sparky. And tart. Now, let us continue to the following slide. But before I go ahead and do that, please. Let us take a look at how this uh, sound can be represented by different combinations of letters. Example, A-R, like in this case, but we also have E-A-R, and we say heart. We don't say he art, we say heart. So for the most part, it's, um, you know, A-R, but you can have E-A-R, or like here, you can have A, A, R, and you say bizarre, bizarre, okay? Please pay attention to the letter combinations that can produce a sound uh, and a phonetic transcription symbol, okay? That's very important because when you're reading, if you see those combinations of letters, you are going to uh, have, you know, a very high probability that you will pronounce the word correctly if you know which uh, combination of letters produce a specific sound. Now, let's move on to the following slide. Okay, sound number six. Sound number six. All right, how many, I want to ask you this question. How many sounds do you see here? Well, we have ow, uh, right? So, uh, I think I said previously that when you have, and this is a secret, again, the same secret when you have two sounds okay two vowel sounds not consonant sounds two vowel sounds the second sound the second sound okay is always short so you should say ow ow if you say ow that is not correct okay let's see how we can correctly pronounce these words now, bout, shout, strauss, loud, snout, 
about bow here i want to make an observation we pronounced bow because here this word is a verb okay if we use this same word as a noun okay i have this note here bow as a verb versus bow as a noun okay the noun is pronounced bow remember that the grammatical category of a word may determine its pronunciation this is why I say that phonetic transcription can help you with grammar too because and grammar can help you with phonetic transcription because and of course with pronunciation if you know that this is a verb you have to say bow if you are using a noun then you should pronounce it bow how do you know when to say bow and when to say bow number one because you studied phonetic transcription then you will learn that there are two possibilities or more but for this specific case let's say there are two possibilities of pronouncing this word now and then um, the other way in which you can know the difference is if your grammar is very strong but either way they're strongly interconnected. If you learn grammar, you're going to know that the verb is pronounced differently, uh, is different from the noun and vice versa. And then if you study phonetic transcription, the, the dictionary will tell you as a verb is pronounced bow, as a noun is pronounced bow. Now, let's continue with the sound ow and the, the next um, word column. This one is pronounced out you say out that is incorrect okay that is not correct it's out next allowed allowed and the last one is gout gout okay this was sound number six once again take a look at the uh, um, combination of letters that can produce the sound Al, which is phonetically represented like this. So we have O W O U O U A U O U O U O W. Okay. Now these are not in in all these lines. Okay. These are not the only possible co letter uh, combinations of letters that can produce you know the phonetic symbols there may be more but these are the examples that I that I'm providing you with today let's move on to the next slide okay this is sound number seven okay the sound is represented like this and of course uh, in uh, slashes um, this is pronounced this is a short but very strong sound. Be very careful. This sound does not exist in some languages, for example, French or Haitian Creole. Um, so make sure that you produce a sound in, in, with, a, with a strong burst of air, like this. Examples, uh, well, uh include these ones but i want to make an observation if you say if you read this phonetic symbol and you say it is that is totally incorrect this is ch examples chin this is the chin chinese chimp chore fixture championship Okay, I want to make three observations here. Okay, number one, um, take a look at this ending, vowel E, consonant S, and vowel E. Many times, not all the time, but many times, when you have a, a vowel, a consonant, and a vowel, this letter S will not sound That is incorrect it will sound zzz, zzz. so if you say chinese that is incorrect you have to say chinese chinese of course you don't you don't have to exaggerate the sound and say chinese no no no, no. 
but briefly you have to make this sound correctly and say Chinese Chinese mm -hmm. so remember a vowel plus letter s plus a vowel sound can make the sound of this uh, consonant z not all the time but many times so observation number two uh, this sound is produced mainly by ch, 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 okay, ch. Now, be careful. That's why you need to read the dictionary, the phonetic transcription, and many times it's important that you read the origin of the word, the etymology. Now, the origin of the word can tell you, for example, if a word comes from French. If a word comes from French, because I said that this sound ch does not exist in French, so French speaking people do not pronounce this like like we do in English. They pronounce it sh. So if a word comes from French, okay, this combination of letters, ch, will be pronounced sh. Example, the word machine. Machine. We don't say machine. That's incorrect because machine is a word that comes from French. And then in that case, this sound will be soft. I'm sorry, not this sound. This sound is ch. I mean, this combination of letters ch, if the word comes from French, will sound softly. So it will be soft. Machine. Never machine because the word is a French word. Now, observation uh, number three. Take a look at the ending of this word, fixture. You have T-U-R-E. T-U-R-E is most of the time in final position, pronounced with this phonetic symbol, with this sound. Ch. Here we go. And then we would say fixture. Sorry about my pointer. Fixture. 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 Now. Here, observation number five. Um, here you have this sound, ch, and it's champ. However, here the letters are sh, and sh almost always, not to say always because I don't like to generalize on languages, um, but almost always, I would say, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time is ch. So you have here, you have a combination of ch, sh, ch, sh, ch, sh. How do you pronounce the word? Simple. Championship. 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 Oh, here we have a very nice surprise. Take a look. T-U-R-E like here. T U R E. If we set this chur fixture, how do we say this? Yes, we say it nature. Nature. Okay. Chang, chump, chump, expe. Oh, surprise again. T U R E. See, if you recognize the combinations of letters that produce. A certain sound every time you see that combination of letters and it will repeat thousands of times okay when you speak every day every week in English you know the correct pronunciation that's why the symbols are so important to learn so expenditure expenditure okay now cheese oh surprise again if if we take a look at the word cheese, it ends in vowel, consonant, I'm sorry, vowel, consonant, vowel, like Chinese, vowel, consonant, vowel. And we said that this S, I'm sorry, we say that this S becomes Z, Z, so cheese. Well, by extension, by the same token, we say cheese, cheese. Cheese. The next example is China. China. Ch 
champ, champ, chat, chat. Okay, here we have T U R E. If we find the phonetic transcription, well, this begins with this sound furniture, 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 and champion champion i want to make an observation with this uh, about this word c o n it is not champion if you say champion is that's incorrect it is incorrect because here we have the sound of schwa the sound of schwa is neutral and it's pronounced uh, so, if you have this and you go to the dictionary merriamwebsters.com or n-w.com and you find the word champion, the phonetic transcription will have champion, champion. And I make this because this is the symbol of schwa, which we saw in sound number one. It's a symbol that is very relaxed and you don't move you don't move your lips or your tongue you just say uh, uh, uh. so you say champion 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 okay let us uh, go to the next slide